Okay, so I have here a thermal, a thermal laminator from Marigold. Uh, it does both hot and cold lamination, as you can see right there. There's cold, off, hot. Right now it's powered on, and the green light indicates that it's ready for hot lamination. I'll just set this down for a second. I don't have my tripod right now, so yeah. What I'm going to laminate is some of my son's art because I want to make a little book of some of the things he's done. I'm going to do it two-sided. These are three millimeter pouches. You can put up to ten of them in here at a time, but I'm just going to do one at a time because I don't want to put a whole bunch in. I don't trust it to not melt them all together. Okay, it gives you directions, like these little arrows, so you know which way to put it in, which is always nice. Um, if you're going to do thermal laminating, which is hot laminating, you need to have thermal laminating pouches. If you're going to do cold laminating, you need to have special cold laminating pouches. And here it goes through, nice and slow. Uh, thermal laminating pouches are different because they're designed to be melted down. Cold laminating pouches are just glued together, and all it really does in that situation is just stick them together and get a good seal. Here it is, coming out the other end. Very nice, good quality, stable. Um, it's sturdy. This is a great way to waterproof your kid's art or anything at all, really. I like laminating stuff that's important because it won't get damaged that way. Now, as you can see, the edges of this are a little curled. You're supposed to flatten everything under a big, heavy book or something first, but I just want to see how it will do if I don't do that. So, let's see. Almost done here. That's actually pretty quick. This was my favorite thing to do in school as a child, laminate stuff. So, the pouch is of course hot when you pull it out because it's a hot laminator, but it's nice quality. And now this is much sturdier. These are his little fishies he colored. He loves cold fishes. Uh, I'm going to do another one. We're just going to very slowly feed it in and let it go. Now, as you can see, this one also is curled just the way this one was, and the first one came out just fine, even though the stuff is curled and says so you're supposed to flatten it out first. So, let's see how this one comes out. And here it comes out the other end. Looking good. Nice. Even. Very good. When you put things in these laminating pouches, it's always important to make sure not to put it too close to the edge of the pouch, because if you do, you're not going to get stuff laminated. Now, the maximum width that this will take, I believe, is 9 inches. So, length, it's just however long your pouch is, because these are made to be used with a laminating pouch, not with uh, rolls. So, there. Now, I've got two nicely laminated things. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off for right now. You can see the little switch here. If I can get it visible. This thing's not hot to the touch, by the way. It's a little warm here and here, but I wouldn't let a child use it, but it's not going to burn you. The little switch has three positions, and it's a little stiff to push, but there we go. Okay, so if you're going to do cold laminating, it's important to make sure that the machine is completely cooled down before you do. And really, you should just leave it in one spot until it's completely cooled down so as not to ding, put anybody in danger or risk fire. It's a slim chance, but it's a possibility. Now, I'm going to use this with two other items I got that are from the same company because I'm going to make a little book. I'm not going to do all of this stuff, but I'm taking some of Zach's artwork and making a little book out of it. Um, this I don't actually need for this particular thing, this paper cutter here, but I just want to show it because I am actually going to use it on some of the other stuff he's got, and I have a spare paper here, which, this is a rotary paper cutter, I'm going to fold this piece of paper, because that way you can see that it can in fact cut more than one sheet. Now, 
This is a regular piece of paper. I folded it, what, three times one? Sorry, I can't count. One, two, three. Yeah, three times. Okay. And so then you slide it under here, and there's different measurements on here for if you're looking to get a specific length of cut, and there's measurements in this way, and there's all kinds of measurements for different things you want to do. It's got this little rotary blade in here, which is exposed a little, so you could cut yourself on it if you're not careful. And of course, this is not something for children to mess with. This is adult supervision only. Um, I like rotary cutters better than I like the guillotine style because you get a more precise cut. Let's see, I have to put my camera down again. You just slide this across and it goes across without any real trouble. But it has the benefit of not. A guillotine tends to, the pages will separate a little, and so you might get angles. And it's not the same all the way across the different pieces, whereas this one does pretty good all the way. So I personally prefer this style, but it's up to you which one you like better. These, this is again Mary Gold. There's the model number in case you want it. Um, I prefer this one, this style, but this company does also have the guillotine style if that's your preference. Oh, one thing I want to mention on this laminator. They weren't clear in the description on Amazon whether or not it comes with laminating pouches, and the answer is it does not. So you have to buy those separately, which is fine. It just bothered me that it wasn't more clear. Okay, now here's the final piece of this puzzle. Okay, I'm not going to lie. I wanted this 99% of the reason I wanted to get this was because I loved playing with these when I was in school. Um, I do, of course intend to put all of Zach's artwork and when Scotty starts doing some his artwork into little books again I have to set my camera down sorry for that so how this works is here it says max 10 sheets in the cutter which is obviously just for the little uh, hole punch part it's got this little lever this way punches holes this way binds books as you can see here it's got a little drawer on the side which takes the little paper scraps and it came with a little box, if I can get it open, without making a filthy mess again. Trust me, these things go everywhere. Of little binding sheets. Now, it only came with small ones, so you can't, these are not binding sheets, I can't remember what they're called. But it's the little spines. These are really little ones, so you can't put a lot of pages in them but they do come in different sizes and this machine will work with any size and it will also work with varying lengths. You can cut them shorter so that you get the length you want. Um, and down here there's a little slider to move, it's very stiff to move, to the length of paper you want. Now we're just doing standard letter size paper so don't really need to move it. So I'm going to set this here and then you slide them in against this slider and then you pull it down, and it punches out the pieces. And in this case, it just punched out the laminating sheeting, because the sheeting is larger than the paper by a considerable amount, which is just fine with me. Um, you can only do 10 sheets at a time if you've got standard paper. Thicker papers, obviously, you do fewer sheets. Okay, now we're going to do this part. Now this thing, sometimes I get these wrong. Let me see if I can get this one right, maybe. You slide it on there. I believe I did that right. Let's see. Uh, nope. I got it wrong that time. Okay, let me see. The part that opens must face up. So this is the part that opens. So then you try again to slide it on here and get it firmly in because if you watch these little spines, you'll see that it pushes forward and it pulls those out. Now the trick is with these little ones, you don't want to go too far because it's funny, but it's not. It'll just launch them. So you move it to the position you want it in. Then you take your freshly cut papers and all you have to do with these is lay them down on 
if I can do this maybe, on the uh, end of the thing. Let me move it up a little so I can see them. There we go. So you just slide the little holes, again it's not wanting to cooperate because I'm doing this one handed, into these. When you have both hands free it's easier. These are very tiny ones, and I'm not used to the tiny ones, so yeah, I'm going to have to buy some bigger ones. I didn't realize it only came with the littlest ones, but again, it's fine. And let me get these lined up. Pardon my incompetence, please. Well, I got one on there. Huh. There you go. If you're feeling bad about yourself, just remember, I'm not smart enough to operate something that children usually operate, apparently. Okay, then you close it, and it pushes it off, and voila. They're latched together. Now, of course, this is not a very sturdy kind of binding, but, I mean, I'm not planning on beating the hell out of this, so it doesn't matter. So, yeah, now I've got my nicely laminated little... I've got a lot more papers to laminate, as you can see. I've got a large box clear full of some of Zach's artwork. Some of it I obviously can't laminate because there's, like, a painted rock and stuff in there, but... Um, yeah, this is a good quality equipment. It's all from Marigold. Um, it works well. I have not had any problems with it. And uh, I'm, I would definitely recommend it if you need any of these kind of things. Laminators, paper cutters, book binders. Um, so yeah. Definitely a worthwhile investment, and the price is not too bad. They, they are priced reasonably for what you're getting. 